start the meeting now. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for being in the set of meeting today. I know it's a day before break and we just want to go home and take a break, but thank you for being here. So um, uh, for just a couple of announcement, uh, announcements, today is the last day to drop um, a class with a W in your transcript. Transcript, please use your best judgment to drop a class or if you, when thinking to, to drop, a, whether to drop a class or not. Um, again, that's all up to you. Um, you know the capabilities of yourself. Um, no one else does. So please, um, if you're thinking about that, use your best judgment. Um, going on, for the set of fridge, we still have our ongoing fridge Fridays. So anything that's um, we've added now, anything that's also in the, um, the sink will also be thrown out. Um, anything in the big fridge will be thrown out and also on the personal um, the personal freezers. So if you don't want anything, please take them out of there and um, 
take them home, and then we can bring it back um, for your own use the next week. Um, also, please pay for what you take out of the um, take out of the for what you buy from the from the setup fridge. Um, we kind of made it made. Well, we'll make this deal that if you guys pay for what you guys buy, then we'll restock the fridge often. If not, then there'll be more times when the fridge isn't restocked. So please pay for them so that you guys can get more opportunities. And so there's that. Um, Mesa Center, um, please don't forget to sign in and sign out. Often we, um, the tutors have seen that a lot of people come in there. Um, it's kind of a routine for everybody to just come in there, walk in, and forget to sign in. Um, that kind of was fixed over this um, semester, but now we're forgetting to sign out. So please <laughs> don't forget to sign out also. Because um, if you don't sign out, then um, you'll get, you'll just be credited for an hour, and um, it will just give us, um, the, the reason for signing in and signing out is so that we, so that higher ups can see that the Mesa Center is being used, and it's a, and it's to show them that also, um, yeah, that is so that is being used and it's just, just just not being wasted. So if you guys forgot to sign out, there's only going to be one hour for you guys in there, and um, that just gives us a false statistic. Yeah, and it's kind of important. I'm going to butt in here. It's like it's what it basically does is it. it it shows the administration that you're using a resource that they're offering to the students. Yes. And if they're appreciated. Yeah, and also, like, I know a lot of us tend to go in, we sign in, and we're, like, there all day, and then you forget to sign out, so you're there for, like, 12 hours, and you only get an hour of credit for that. And the Mesa Center only gets one hour of credit for that. Like, you were there so many hours, like, you lost 11 hours that could have been contributed to the Mesa Center's statistics. So it is important that you not only log in, but don't forget to log out because at the end of the day, we have like a list of 20 people that didn't log out and they only get an hour worth of credit. So, so. yeah, just please make sure to sign in and sign out. Um, backroom complaints. So we've had a lot of people, um, students there, just going in the back room and studying there. Please only use the back room for eating. Um, it gets crowded, especially during lunchtime when there's people studying in there, plus there's people that wanna eat. So um, we tend to keep food out of the Mesa Center, and that's not possible Possible if there's people um, eating in the back room or studying in the back room while it's only for eating. So just please don't socialize in there. Please don't study in there. Please just only um, eat. We use that for eating. Um, again, use your resources wisely. AEW workshops are now going on. Um, the schedule is posted on the bulletin boards, and there's suitors um, across the board or across um, every hour in the Mesa Center. And for volunteer opportunities, we have this Tulare, we just got this new volunteer opportunity for the Tulare Pub County Public Health Department yesterday, and they are looking for 10 volunteers um, to do a survey on public health and data collection. And you'll be collecting um, data based on, I guess, isn't it tobacco? Here? <laughs> tobacco products. Yeah, tobacco products. Um, when you sign up, you will get a four-hour um, training, and then from there on, they'll they'll accommodate with your busy schedules, and they will work with you. So if you want to sign up, um, I'll be passing this uh, sign-in sheet here. Who do you ask? You set up little video and collect data on is that what you're doing is collecting data. Yes. You are how many people? Yes. How many people do you with this? Um, we're not really sure of the logistics of this. Um, we just got the volunteer yeah. from. This is not something that SET is putting on. It's through the Tulare County. The County is putting on. Yeah. So if so, you sign up, um, they'll give if you give them the email. I'm sure they'll email you about um what you'll be doing exactly. So um, yeah. So if you guys want to volunteer, it's a good opportunity, um, especially for public health majors and environmentalists. Um, you know when this will be taking place? We have no date as far as when all this training they'll, will take place. They'll email you everything um, if you um, write your email down on it. So um, again, also thank you for all those who volunteered for the science fair. There was a couple people there. I saw you guys. Um, thank you for um, taking time off. Who all volunteered? Can you guys stand up so we can kind of see? Awesome. Thank you guys. So, thank you.
thank you for being there. Um, we have another volunteer opportunity today. That's we've been announcing this over the past two set of meetings now. Um, we have the Mokei High School Middle School STEM Day. It's today from we just heard it's from three to five. So if you, it's yeah, but be there at three, please. If you need a ride, please be in the Mesa Center at two twenty. Three. No. Okay, we have to be over there at the school at 3 o'clock because that's when we're scheduled, 3 to 5. Yes, we are so. scheduled from 3 to 5. Please be there promptly at 3 so we can start. Um, if you need a ride, please come see me or Deidre or David. As soon as possible because, um, you know. Yeah, so we can, so we know uh, about how many people there. There are a couple who just came to see me already. And those who need a ride, please be at the Mesa Center at 2.20. Um, and also, please have your please have a liability form printed or filled out there in the Mesa Center. Also, um, you can turn them into me, Deidre, or Anissa, or um, David. Also, can take those. Moving on, we have um, officer nominations. We currently have the box of it's a white box in the Mesa Center. Um, please use the nomination sheet. We will be taking nominations up until the next set of meeting. So next set of meeting, we will announce the nominations, whether they'd like to accept or not. And um, please. President, vice president. President. All right, please um, keep in mind that these are the future of SETA. Um, if you, um, let's try to stay away from making this a popularity contest and let's make it more of a, um, best. A, yeah, best fit. Uh, requirements like that they meet the eligible or that they meet the requirements for it it should be somebody the traits the traits for it that's what yeah. it is yeah it's gonna it, it should be somebody who's going to be determined and willing to you know work with other people and works well in the group and as well as you know has the determination to prepare meetings and discuss things um that we can present to you know you guys if you're not transferring it or the next wave of yeah. sediment and please make keep that in mind is make sure they're not transferring out also um because if not that's just going to be um they're just going to decline and this going to be a waste of nomination but just just keep those in mind the mace the valid the nomination boxes in the mesa center also they need to have been a sediment for one semester. yes that's a good point too yeah. one semester all right um moving on um upcoming activities we have the cal poly um Open house um, at that slow April 16th. We will be taking. Um, do we have a sign up sheet for that? Or next time? Next. Okay, next next time we'll have a sign up sheet. We'll go based. We'll take um, as many bands as um, however much you guys want. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. That's April 16th. I believe that's a Saturday or a Friday. Saturday. And also the CMC Cube. There are. It's in Lake Tahoe from April 22nd to the 24th. That's um, not the 23rd, it would be on the 24th. They'll be coming back that Sunday. And I believe there's only six more spots remaining. So if you want to sign up for um, the CMC Cube, um, that's a math conference that the sign club will be attending. If you want to sign up for that, please attend the sign meeting today, right after the, um, the setup meeting. Um, we also have the setup end of the year camping trip. Um, San Francisco will be camping at Point Reyes. Um, be 23rd to the 25th. That's something to keep in the back of your head. Um, that's the week after graduation. Yeah, the week after finals. Um, it's that Monday to Wednesday. And we have an interest sheet. Necessarily, <coughs> just because you signed this doesn't mean you'll actually be on uh, the list to go. The way that you get on the list to go is you fill out all the necessary paperwork. Um, but this is just to give us an idea of how many people would be interested in attending. That way we know how to plan and, you know, get the proper vans if we need, like, two vans or just one. So um, if you're interested, please sign up. That would be a good idea. So more details will come to follow on that. And lastly, we have a BioForge field trip, um, which Dr. Dewey will be um, talking about right now. So doctor, please welcome Dr. Dewey to talk about the BioForge. Thank you. Good to see you all out here on Friday. Let's see. Okay, so I just put together two slides. Um, so BioForge is our biology research club. We meet Fridays right after SETA at 1 to 2 in the same room. If you haven't heard about us. 
Um, we're sponsoring a field trip being that we kind of organized it, but everybody's invited to join and funds from all the science clubs are kind of mixing together to help make it happen. Um, I'd like to ideally take five to 10 students on this trip. Um, I, these are the two places we're visiting. One is cytokinetics, it's industry, and I don't know if you go end up going into biology research. You have two main tracks of careers, which is industry research. Um, obviously, that has a lot of different specialties within it, or working in academia, going to usually big universities, getting research grants and running a research lab in that direction. So we're kind of both, it's one, we're going to sample one of each. Um, so cytokinetics is industry. They focus on research related to muscular disorders. Uh, a couple of, if you can switch to the next page, please. Um, so this is just kind of from their web page. Um, so they, they have two kind of big clinical trials they're doing right now on two pharmaceuticals. One's for treating heart failure and one is for treating, um, a, uh, how many of you guys have done the ice bucket challenge? Do you see those pictures going around? Yeah. Okay, so it's 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 for treating um, patients with AL, or ALS. It's, so that's what the ice bucket picture is there for. Um, one of those is in a phase three clinical trial. So in this in this company, they do research from molecular biochemical level all the way to clinical level, um, and we'll get to talk to scientists about that entire process. And um, we have to sign a non-disclosure agreement because it's they're doing cutting edge research. Um, so that'll be, I think it'll be a very interesting, I'm excited to see it. So this is a former colleague of mine from UC Davis who works for them now as one of the head research scientists. So he'll be giving us a tour of their facilities and we'll have a chance to talk to other scientists working there and probably see them in action is what I'm picturing. And then the next, so we'll do that on Friday and then we'll stay the night somewhere in South San Francisco, San Bruno area. And then we'll go to Stanford, where I have another colleague who's doing her postdoctoral research there in a lab that focuses on cardiac issues. So both are kind of muscle related, um, interesting in terms of being able to compare them. But both use biochemistry, both use cellular biology, molecular biology. You'll see a lot of different techniques. The Saturday presentation is fun. She has a colleague in her lab who does research on the effects of exercise in the mitochondria. And what he will do, and if you went with us last year, th this part will be the same. Um, so hopefully we have mostly new people. But he's actually going to run you guys through a mock experiment. And he'll take mice and you're going you're gonna to look at their respiratory exchange ratio and look at basically what does exercise at different levels of intensity do to that and relate that to what substrates they're burning. So you'll be doing an actual experiment at a lab in Stanford that Saturday. And then Christy Diesel um, will be giving us a presentation on her research. And just one of the exciting things about what she does, there's two, well, I, I nerd out on all this stuff. So I think all what, everything she does is awesome. But some of the cutting edge technology that she's using is induced pluripotent stem cells. Have you guys, have you heard of that? Most people have heard stem cells, right? So stem cells for research, they're useful because we can take them and send them, give them messages to become any kind of cell on the body. But it's controversial because we had to get it from embryonic fluid, right? Um, so induced pluripotent stem cells are the idea is that you can take fibroblasts from somebody's just skin or underneath their skin and their connective tissue, turn them into stem cells, and then then turn turn around, turn them back into whatever cell you want. So she actually takes these cells from current patients at Stanford Medical Center, turns them into heart cells, and then studies does her experiments on those cells. So that's um, induced pluripotent stem cells. The other thing she uses in her research is called CRISPR. Did we hear about CRISPR? It's a method of slicing genes into DNA. Um, and this is the, the technology that has allowed them to think about being able to do gene therapy in embryos and another controversial situation where they can take, genetically modify human embryos, basically. But they're, so they're on the edge of that. They're not doing that research here. That's more done in, I think, China. I don't know the details of it. Um, but so both those technologies are used in pretty interesting ways. CRISPR has a lot of applications. So she doesn't use it for anything controversial like that. She uses it to put genes that are known to cause heart disease into cells and then study those cells to see what those genes are doing in those cells in terms of how they work. So, um, so if you're interested in biology research in particular, but any level of research, um, you stand a chance to learn a lot from coming on this trip. Um, both situations will be interacting with the scientists in kind of an informal, like you can ask them about their career trajectories, what were their biggest challenges, 
how did they discover what they were interested in? I don't know, kind of anything you want. So that's our field trip. That's all I have to say. Do you have any questions? We're going to be talking about it more in our actual BioForge meeting at one. Um, if you do have questions, thank you. Thank you. Um, just real quick, you do have to do a um, couple steps to sign up. Um, you have to email her answering these two questions. What is your major? What's your career objective? And why do you want to go on this field trip? And if you wanted to get more information again like on that, again, please um, go to the BioForge field trip today after the set of meeting. Um, Friday Night Labs are still going on. Um, is it on for today, Doctor? Yeah, it's on for today. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Red is going to do a presentation on jQuery. Hi, program. No? Uh, I, I just put them up. Oh, oh, okay. Thanks. Students. Uh, and I'm going to do a little demonstration on making simple circuits. Okay. So, yeah, go we'll attend tonight at, for the Friday Night Labs. And now, I believe, or set up Harold still. Um, if you still, we still see a couple people with inks fading out, um, please go re um, exchange that. You do get to keep the shirt that's fading out, but we just want to see it so that we don't, you don't like keep changing that shirt over and over again to get unlimited shirts. We do, um, yeah, we do put a mark on that. So once it's marked, then you can't exchange that shirt again. Um, we're still selling our hoodies for $25. Um, it's kind of um, for next year if you want. Set a hoodie for next year, then yeah, you can still have that. Camping trip? Yeah, camping trip too. We have two camping trips coming up. Um, we have Instagram, COS setup, and also Facebook. It's a group on Facebook. So um, you need to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Now, um, our speaker, Mr. Juan Alvarez, is here. He is the regional director for USDA, in other words, he's really high up there. So please welcome Mr. Juan Alvarez. Thank you for that, that introduction. Um, I am high up there, but I don't have an ego. So keep that in mind as I do speak with you here today. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not as young as you. Uh, or, or a couple years older than you, uh, but I still feel as though I can relate to, to you and some of the challenges that you go through. Uh, okay. That's okay. I was going to say, uh, last week I was here, I passed out some cards. I know some of you received them. Uh, I will pass out a few more if, in case we didn't get one last, last Friday. So the title of our presentation here today is USDA Get It, and you may ask yourself why. Uh, because when it comes to USDA or agriculture itself, a lot of folks, or in particular students, uh, just think about agriculture, food inspection. And we are much more than that. Uh, just to give you an idea or a brief overview, 50% or nearly 50% of our workforce, not just at USDA, but federal government, is going to be eligible for retirement here in the next five to seven years. You are the millennials. You are the next generation. Okay. So what does that mean for US students? Jobs. 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 Okay. You know, um, at the same time, the market, as you may or may not uh, be up to date on it, is very competitive. Okay, something that is not really talked about here in academia is how competitive it is for the jobs of tomorrow. Meaning, meaning we are a globalized economy. Okay, uh, you all know that. So for the jobs of tomorrow, you're you are now having to compete with students from China. Latin America, Eastern and Western Europe, and so forth, so the world. So it's that much more challenging, it's that much more competitive. What are you doing now as students to prepare yourselves for those jobs of tomorrow? For those jobs of tomorrow, okay? And I'm here to uh, share some information about you, uh, or with you, about some of those uh, opportunities that may be available. So the mission of our program is to cultivate knowledge and develop leaders. Okay? How I do that as regional director for Central North and California in the state of Washington, long title, right? And it just sounds fancy. But what I do is I work with colleges and universities at the two and four year level that and USD agencies, whether they be local, state, national, regional, to more or less create collaborations and partnerships that lead to research, grants, educational programs, as well as a diverse workforce. I also work with a lot of nonprofit organizations, state, local, and national leaders as well as industry and other CBOs um, to more or less tackle issues that are of critical importance to the Hispanic community. I'll give you an example, food insecurity. 
uh, because of the drought is very rampant uh, in Fresno and Tulare County itself. Being that we are one of the most productive agricultural regions of the world, our, our students, you meaning you, still uh, have um, or suffer for, from or do not necessarily have access to a meal. It's my experience at Fresno State, since it is my host institution, is that I found that nearly 200 of my students lived in the base. And these are students that live in the LA area, San Francisco, et cetera. And so that, to me, that's the that, that's problem. I mean, if I expect you to succeed both academically and professionally, it's I need to know that you have a home. I need to know that you have access to, to food. Okay. Um, Um, also, uh, you know, I do work with a lot of universities to increase the transfer rate of Latinos and other underrepresented students to a four-year university, uh, just because, you know, that is something uh, that we, are, our program is passionate about uh, in supporting underrepresented students. Okay, so my first question to you all is, what do you think USDA is? And I know you see the cow, and it's exciting, <laughs> right? But there are no right or wrong answers. And your, from your perspective, what is USDA? A regulatory agency. A regulatory agency. Okay, that's part of it. Research. Research. Come on, I had a I had a scientist here last week and an engineer. You had to learn something about what it is that they do for for USDA. Agriculture, isn't it? <laughs> well, no, no, it's bigger than that. That's what I hear about. To a certain extent, yes. Water distribution. Okay. So we have different answers. So our program, our, our department was established in 1862 by President Abraham Lincoln. It's commonly known, or it's known as the People's Department. Why? It's because we provide services to not just farmers and ranchers, but literally all Americans. You all, um, more or less, are served by us on a daily basis. Okay? For instance, how many of you were on the uh, National School Lunch Program, the Free School Lunch Program? Okay, that's USDA. See, that's us providing you with a meal. Uh, also, we do also uh, work with rural communities and more or less providing families with housing. Also, the drought issue, it's like uh, right now a lot of our engineers uh, and our loan specialists from the Farm Service Agency Rural Development are working with, with Porterville, for, for instance, and ensuring that they have, or the people of Porterville have access to water. So USDA does touch your lives on a daily basis without you necessarily having or uh, knowing that it does. Okay, so now we're gonna play a quick little, little game. Uh, I need you to more or less guess which of these was, was my major uh, when I was a student. Uh, like you. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, but how many, of you, and it's, yeah, I mean, the game is simple. All you have to do is I shout out these names, just raise your hand and guess which one, uh, uh, well, which one of these was me. So, international relations. So I don't look like someone that has international experience, huh? That's what you're saying, got it. Uh, Latin American studies. Okay. Economics. Cool. Spanish. So the stereotypes? <laughs> I see, so like you can do anything else besides major in Spanish. <laughs> Public administration. All right, so the young lady who said that these were all my majors, she is actually the one that's correct. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so these are all my degrees. Uh, I am a Chico State alum, uh, meaning that's where I did my undergraduate. So for those of you that want to go to Chico, uh, hit me up. I do have some recommendations before you get there. I did do my master's at San Diego State University, another party school, by the way, in case you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my professional career started at the state capitol. Uh, I moved out to, to San Diego, where I worked for the county at, uh, under the wing of the chief administrative officer, who actually became my mentor. And then I moved uh, east, uh, back to the east coast, uh, where I worked for the USDA as a, legislative, as a legislative analyst. But I won't get to that till the end. So understanding the importance of agriculture itself. We are a very large industry. Okay? Just here in the Central Valley alone, ag is a $20 billion business. And because they say that you are the millennials and that you like money, just like I do, 
Okay? I want to talk to you about money. I want to talk to you about opportunity here today. Okay? And how your major, whether it's engineering, whether it's accounting, whether it's business, marketing, communication, etc., fits with the USDA. So in the Central Valley, we are a $20 billion business. Domestically, meaning within the US, we are worth $80 billion. Okay? Internationally, we are worth $120 billion. So globally, USDA is worth $200 billion. Tell me that does not excite you. <laughs> Tell me that does not excite you. Okay. So some of the benefits of working for government are the benefits themselves. Retirement health, <coughs> job security, job security. Right. At the same time, it's, you do get paid a decent wage. You do get paid a decent wage. I mean, I know some of you may hear or here may want to be millionaires. Public service, that's not going to happen. Okay, it's just not going to happen. I'm going to be honest with you. But you do get to provide services to stakeholders, and the job itself is very rewarding. We are only second to the Department of Defense. And guess what? Other than the Department of Defense, this country needs us. This country needs our services. Okay, so in terms of job security, it's going to be there, right? USDA, food, water. You know, economic uh, development opportunities for communities. Uh, also, there are 17 agencies within USDA itself. Uh, anything from uh, the Food and Nutrition Service to the Agriculture Research Service, which is USDA's chief scientific agency, whether it's the Food Safety Inspection Service, Rural Development, etc. They all strive to uh, to achieve different missions within USDA, which collectively provide services to to you all. So, management. Okay. I'm looking for the next wave of managers, next wave of managers. And oftentimes I get students to say, well, you know what? What if I major in, in English? What would I be doing? It's like anything from public affairs to communication uh, to actually managing, managing a $20, bill, uh, $20 million uh, uh, staff program within USDA. Okay. If you major in political science, international relations, business, you could be doing some of those things for USDA. International business, you could actually work in combination with the USDA and the US Department of State at an embassy in Latin America. And you can pay for it. That's your housing, that's your round trip airfare. On top of that, that foreign exchange, especially with Latin America, goes a long way. Science and technology, I know mostly, if not all of you, are STEM majors, and that's the very popular term right now in academia. So we are looking for the next generation of chemistry majors, microbiology, plant science, GIS, entomology, statistics. Believe it or not, USDA has an, a mathematical organization or agency specifically titled for, specifically for math majors. It's known as the National Agriculture Statistics Service. Okay, computer science, uh, as well as uh, mathematics. Agribusiness, I'm looking for uh, economists, education, food science, public health. Uh, for public health majors, it's right now USDA has upwards of about $150,000, if I'm not mistaken, per year available for you to access access scholarship money that will literally pay your full way through your undergraduate uh, degree. Meaning you could you could be at COS today, transfer to UC Davis, uh, personal stay any four year, and get your four year paid job. No strings attached. Something to consider. So natural resources, if you want to major in the forestry, civil engineering, uh, environmental science, and so forth, we are looking for, for you. So how do we access those opportunities? Okay. How do you go about accessing it or being part of our team? One of the ways that, in which you can do that is actually go to usajobs.gov, type in Pathways Program. Okay. The first thing that's going to come up is the internship component under the Pathways Program. Okay. It's a paid internship. Minimum pay. $11 per hour. Maximum pay, $55 per hour. Any major. Any major. How do you get that $55 per hour experience, ladies and gentlemen? So seek out volunteer or internship opportunities that are going to specifically enhance your knowledge, skills, and abilities in your area of study. And at the end of the day, we at USDA want you to graduate with your degree with your degree and with experience. That way, when you do go out into the job market, you are that much more competitive and prepared to be successful, to be successful as a profession. 
Okay, so all majors can, uh, you know, well, you have to be at least 16 years old to be able to participate in the uh, internship program through the pathways. Okay, some of the benefits is that housing, housing may be available to you. It's not guaranteed, but some internship opportunities through that program can pay your housing while you're in Alaska, while you're in Puerto Rico, or anywhere across the U.S. Okay, and some of them can also pay your rent for benefit. But also, the reason why the wages are so high is because the majority of those internship positions don't necessarily come with those perks. So you have to be really strategic as to which ones you want to apply, at least in my opinion. Okay. Also, the recent graduates program under the pathways okay, will give you a competitive edge opportunity mean, in accessing employment opportunities with government. What that means is two years from the day that you graduate, at a non-competitive basis, you are eligible to apply for certain positions that I or other federal employees cannot access or apply for, meaning we cannot compete with you for those positions. You'll be competing with other students that are recent graduates. So the job market, if you know private industry is not working for you, consider the recent graduates program. Okay. The Presidential Management Fellows Program is for students that are pursuing a master's or a PhD. If the agency has enough funds within their respective budgets, they can actually pay your full master's and PhD. Let me repeat that again. <laughs> if the agency has enough funding in their budget, they can actually pay your full master's and PhD. That means no student loans, ladies and gentlemen. No student loans. No debt. Sorry? The only strings is that if you're going into medicine, then they will not pay your your master's or PhD for obvious reasons. Once you become a doctor, you're gonna be rolling in Benjamins, right? <laughs> As we like to say, and yeah, you're more than likely gonna well, open up your own practice and or maybe go work for Kaiser or somebody, you know, make a lot of money. But any other major, no strings. No strings. Okay. Also, some of the benefit of participating in the Presidential Management Fellowship Program is that it's a training opportunity. It's like these folks are gonna groom you to become the next leaders of America, or at least that's our hope and idea. Meaning we want you to be the next Secretary of Education, the next, the next Secretary for the National Science Foundation, the next Secretary of the USDA. That's our goal, that's our vision. Are you gonna get there? It's really contingent upon your, your effort motivation um, and then volunteer service I can't you know say enough about volunteer opportunities as I have a lot of students that come up to me that are wanting uh, to to more or less seek out opportunities within government within USDA itself but may not have a resume that shows experience it's you know take on opportunities that are going to be beneficial to you and what better way than to do volunteering with some organizations but with that being said it's be careful that these folks don't use and abuse you Meaning just because you're college students, that nece doesn't necessarily mean that they have the right to give you grunt work. <coughs> okay. The grunt work that nobody wants to do because, in my opinion, you don't learn through those type of, of, uh, of experiences. So in relation to, to volunteer, it's what I've done is I've developed the ICER volunteer program. Okay. This is a service learning opportunity slash internship that allows students such as yourselves to actually work alongside a professional that has 10 or more years of experience uh, in your respective field of study. Meaning if you are interested in becoming an engineer, I will, we, meaning the agency, myself, will develop a project that will benefit you, that will enhance your learning. Okay? At the same time, I will inquire as to what it is that you want to learn. Okay, because this is me making an investment in you. This is me working with a colleague that is going to be vested in mentoring you. Okay? And while we mentor you, it's I want you to come work for us. Or at least that's my hope. That's my hope. And it's why, it's why we make it a meaningful experience to students. So some of the uh, requirements that we ask for you, or some of the things that we require that you submit, is your resume. Okay, we want you to compose two essays where you tell me your personal qualities or life experiences that distinguish you from other applicants. I asked that because last summer I had over 100 students uh, that actually applied through the ICER volunteer uh, for the summer. Okay, within three weeks, 
90 of my students were offered paid internships with the USDA. I did not have anything to do with that. Okay, that's somebody that's being responsible, that's being there on time, okay, and is able to produce quality of work, being offered a paid internship during the summer, 15 bucks per hour for eight weeks. So they all started as volunteers. They all started as volunteers, and only 10, 10 students did not get a paid offer. But some of those were the ones that were late. Some of those were the ones that didn't take that work series. Okay. So in reality, you are in control of your success. Okay. And then how does the USDA along with your career goals? Remember, we are a very broad organization, very broad organization. So it's not just agriculture, right? Also, we ask that you submit your unofficial transcripts and your proof of enrollment, meaning, meaning that you are a college student and you are seeking what an associates or, or uh, gonna be pursuing a, a bachelor's. Another great opportunity that I like to promote or program that I like to promote within USDA is the Forest Service Central California Consortium Program. This eight week internship allows students to work in the forest. Okay. Its whole objective is to educate you about the importance of natural resources uh, in the environment. We are constantly looking for the next generation of biology majors through this program, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, biologists, and so forth. Okay. Last year through this program, we hired about 205 community college students alone. 205 community college students alone. Why do I say that? Because oftentimes my community college students are the ones that don't necessarily feel as though they can be competitive enough with four year students that participate in some of our internship programs. So I wanna debunk that myth. Okay, because if you don't apply, guess what? You're not gonna get it. Is that simple? Is that some? I mean, I have a, I have no problem with people telling me no. Okay, I have nothing to lose. You say yes, I'm gonna make something out of it. I'm gonna use it to, to the best of my ability. Yes, sir. I'm just curious, was that 205 out of the national poll or statewide? Two statewide. Uh, state well, actually, Central Northern California wide, meaning as far south as Santa Maria to as far north as the uh, Oregon border. Yes. I have both more questions. Would you access this from the uh, path wait, from the uh, USA Jobs scenario? I'll, I'll get to that. So you, you're thinking ahead. I like that. <laughs> so some of the, uh, some of the requirements, okay, is that you do have to submit again that resume. That resume is important. Make sure that you are highlighting your your academics, your professional and training. Okay, make sure that you are highlighting those skills correctly and efficiently. It is a competition after all. Uh, also, you do have to possess a minimum. Uh, 2.0, we're not desperate, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, I know the bar is not high, but yeah. we're not desperate. If you want any organization to take you seriously, whether it's public or private, try to have at least a minimum 3.0, okay? You do also have to submit a cover letter. Why is that important? Because you are gonna be at Yosemite, you may be at Sequoia, you may be at, you know, at a national park down in the San Francisco, LA area for eight to 10 weeks, meaning you actually stay at a cabin. Okay, Where, which, which by the way, housing is on us, uh, on us. But at the same time, if you're gonna be there for eight to 10 weeks, it's, I want you to be happy. So tell me what it is that you wanna learn in terms of your project, okay? Tell me what excites you. Tell me why, why you wanna be there. Because at the same time, I'm making a financial investment in you, okay? I want you to see USDA as, your, as a potential employer as a potential employer. So if I'm making that financial investment in you, it's, I, I do want you to be happy. I do want you to be happy. I want you to continue learning on a daily basis. If you're not learning, that means we're not doing our job. If for whatever reason you are picking, or you're, answer, or you're just answering phone calls on the job, or doing filing, you call me right away. I will solve that problem for you. That's not why you're there. So when we really say academic and professional experiences, I really mean that we deliver academic and professional experiences. But at the same time, it's, I need you to tell me what that is for you. What type of skills you wanna get out of these uh, or learn from these internship opportunities. At the same time, you submit your, your college transcript uh, and also you do have to at least be a permanent resident uh, or a US citizen. Uh, for those of you or who may be DACA students, 
is we are working uh, with Forest Service to more or less see if we can provide you all with, with an opportunity. And it's something new that we are exploring for this upcoming summer. In terms of how to access the application pool, uh, this is the website. Uh, for those of you who are, let me ask this, uh, <coughs> how many of you are just pursuing an associate's? How many of you are just pursuing an associate's degree? Don't plan the transfer. Yeah, I'm not planning your transfer at all. No one? And I just say that because we are going to be having a, um, a direct hiring uh, on-site event here in Fresno, uh, May 12th, I believe it's a Thursday. I still don't have uh, the location and I'll have the vacancies a uh, week before the actual direct hiring event where engineers, technicians, you name it, it's, uh, you, know, you won't have to go to the usajobs.gov. We'll be interviewing and hiring you on the spot. Okay. We do work with a nonprofit organization called the Hispanic Association of the Colleges and Universities, which is a nonprofit, well, already said it's a nonprofit uh, established. It's, well, HAPU advocates on behalf of Hispanic serving institutions throughout the US. Um, and they, in 1992, this organization started with about 24 internships, meaning they partnered with every federal agency within government as well as Fortune 500 companies. It's actually the top 25 Fortune 500 companies that participate in this national internship program. Okay. It is 15 weeks in the fall and spring, 10 weeks in the summer, but what I love the most about this specific opportunity, it really is very unique in the sense that not only are you exposed to different federal agencies or the potential to be hired by different federal agencies uh, or corporations, but it is a paid internship, meaning you do get $520 per week. Okay, that's a flat rate. That's per week. Okay. You do attend a three-day orientation. Uh, there is a 70% chance that you may be placed in Washington, D.C., other 30% chance that you can do an internship anywhere across the country. But guess what? If you are accepted to this internship, I will pay for your round trip airfare. I will pay for your round trip airfare, regardless, regardless of where we place you. That means you could go to New York, you could go to San Juan, Puerto Rico, you could go to Miami, Las Vegas. <laughs> in terms of housing, in terms of housing, okay, as a courtesy to you, Haku, you could go with Haku Housing, I meaning they will provide you with housing, and don't worry. It's you won't be living in the ghetto. <laughs> a lot of folks think that, you know, it's, it's government housing. No. I mean, if you don't want anything to happen to you, besides, it's a lawsuit, right? <laughs> so we want to avoid that. We want to avoid that. Okay? So you will live in apartments that are near the metro system if you're in D.C., near the bus, in a bus station in D.C. So you'll have access to public transportation, is what I'm trying to get at. But you also have the option Okay, of securing your own house, of securing your own house. Okay. If you go with Haku, at no time whatsoever will you pay more than six to $800, regardless of where you live, regardless of where you live, for your 10 weeks uh, summer internship. Okay, that's 800 bucks. I tell students all the time, uh, my wife did an internship at the White House several years ago. Okay. I paid $15,000 out of pocket for six months in DC. Mm -hmm. So for you to get for you to pay eight hundred bucks to live in Washington DC, tell me yeah. you're getting a great deal. <laughs> you're getting a great deal. Besides a week, three days into it, you pay rent, the rest of the money is for you to keep. So in a week and three days you cover rent. Not a bad deal. Now if you decide to go, you know, the other route where you have to, you know, look for your own housing, then of course you have to pay, you know. Uh, more rent. Uh, another benefit from Haku is that last year alone we worked with about 10,000 students just in my here, just in my region alone. Okay. That's 10,000 students I worked with. I want to say about 7,000 got internships for the summer. 80 percent of the of those students that participated were offered employment opportunities once they graduate from college. They don't necessarily have to go with that company, as I like to tell them. But the thing is, is that they have options. They have the luxury of telling other employers no, should they choose to not work with government. Okay. 
That could be you, maybe. That can be you. You can also earn academic credit if you participate in this internship program. Okay, up to 12 units of academic credit. So, in terms of things that you do have to submit or eligibility, <coughs> is that you do have to be uh, at least a sophomore standard. Okay. So if you are a freshman now, if you complete 30 units here at COS, you are eligible to apply. And you do have to submit a 500 word essay. That's 500 word essay. That's, that's a page. Okay. In terms of the questions, it's like, um, you know, why are you applying to the Hawkeye National Internship Program? You know, what are your academic and career goals? You know, uh, what skills do you have that would be of value or an asset to any organization that participates in this internship program? <coughs> so again, the questions are about you, and we want to know your interest. In addition to that, you do have to submit your yes. Yes, the yeah. No, thank you for saying that. For none of these internship opportunities, do you have to be Hispanic? Just like USDA, it's a label. And I will say something about that here in a, uh, a, a something with my whole little spiel. Uh, but you do also have to submit a verification of enrollment, okay? Which means that you, it's, which it's a form that says that you are a student or you will continue to be a student at COS or you're transferring to X institution, et cetera. Okay? We just want to confirm that you are a student. And then you do have to submit your official transcripts. The application for the fall 2016 is June 17th in regards to being a Hispanic student. So I have two sad stories to, to tell you. Uh, the first is, so I have, or I have the potential to serve about 450,000 students in my region. Okay. Of those, I want to say of the 7,000 students that I worked with last summer uh, to apply to this internship program, about 50% were Hispanic. Okay. The other 50, uh, a mix of African American students, Asian American students, Indian American students. Caucasian students, okay, a mix, a mix. So it's very, very even, very even. And guess what? 50, actually, 50% of both, 50% of the 50% of both uh, were accepted to this internship program. So what I'm trying to get at is that you have the same possibility as a Hispanic you know, uh, to be accepted to one of these internships. It's all a matter of how you market. The second sad story is that I have internships, or scholarships, I should say. Okay, I had one in particular for a biology major, a fifty thousand dollars scholarship, okay. specifically for Hispanic students. I had an African American student apply because I encouraged her to apply. She was the only one that applied for. Oh. <laughs> guess, who's got, guess who got a fifty thousand dollar scholarship? <laughs> so it's just a label. It's that just a label. Like a happy story, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy Sad in the sense <laughs> that you know, I mean, yeah, a level of interest. What's it there? One applicant. One out with you. I'm applying to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, apply is what I'm saying. You know, figure out what choice that is. Also, as some of you here may be thinking about master's, PhD, et cetera, you know, there are programs out there at universities, out of state in particular, and maybe not necessarily just California, that will literally pay for a master's or PhD. Uh, the City College of New York is one of those that will literally pay pay for you to pursue uh, uh, a degree in anything that's environmental uh, related, from biology to soils to, to just environmental science itself, uh, to even engineering, okay? <coughs> for, your, for your full master's and PhD, you get up to $30,000 scholarship, pays for your GRE, so you get a paid internship that, come, that comes along with it, and then you also get training in GIS, which in my opinion, all of you, uh, that's a software opportunity that would make you that much more marketable when applying for jobs, especially in the Valley. And it's training that I would recommend that you consider uh, obtaining here at COS if you can. Uh, I do have a STEM initiative, and I'm putting together a migrant students and STEM conference similar to what you all are doing this afternoon uh, at the high school here. Uh, but mine is more to geared towards uh, providing students with hands-on opportunities for many projects and, and STEM itself meaning I have professionals not only at USDA, 
but also NASA and other federal agencies that are putting together these projects for you all to more or less apply theory in the real world. It's oftentimes students say, well, you know, where, when am I ever gonna use this information in the real world? Well, guess what? I'm actually gonna put you to the test and see how, you know, well, how well you can perform on, on, on the spot. So if you wanna join us Saturday, April 16th at Fresno State, our website is www.hsi.usda. I don't want to, you know, bore you all day uh, and talk, talk, tell you about all these exciting opportunities that we have available at USDA. But do visit us. And then about me, wow, so how do I come? How do I go about that? Okay. USDA. Sorry. Um, USDA. Yeah. Can I get that and send it out to them? Sure. Oh, wow. Oh, it's on, it's on, it's on. There it is. Yeah. I have you got one. Then you're good. So um, uh, I am a son of migrants or migrant parents, uh, meaning my father completed uh, second grade, my mother completed sixth grade. Uh, just like many Latinos, I am the first in my family to have graduated with a high school degree, with a with a bachelor's, master's, etc. Um, which you know, to my parents, I mean, they're they're very happy for me. And why not? So, but you know, I laid the foundation. Uh, so with that being said, it's, it's I come from a humble background, from a very humble background. Uh, something that I'm very proud of is the day that I graduated high school. I actually bought my parents a home. Okay, so that's me actually buying them a brand new home, which next year I'll pay them off. So sweet. Thank you. The day after I graduated, I actually moved out um, and you know made, took it upon myself to raise my two brothers, uh, who were both eight and nine respectively at the time. Uh, one of them is now at Chico State, pursuing a degree uh, in business administration with a minor in criminal justice, and the other one wants to be a neurosurgeon. Why? I don't know, but that's what he's passionate about, and it's costing me money. <laughs> you know, I do have to support him in that endeavor, uh, nonetheless. Well, I don't have to. I choose to. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, going through the CSU system uh, was very difficult. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I did struggle my first year just because, not because I, you know, I wasn't there academically, but just I was taking too much at that time. And it was very difficult for me to make that adjustment in higher education. You know, I didn't have nobody there to mentor me, guide me, uh, et cetera, through the system. And so I didn't know how to enroll for the proper classes. Uh, the second semester, it's, you know, I tended to love college. Um, I excelled. I established, I established a club, uh, club which continues at uh, Chico State, which pretty much brings in professionals, uh, in particular politicians uh, and well-respected businessmen, businessmen from all across the globe to talk to students about, you know, how it is that they can be successful, how, to, how they can access resources and maximize them so they can be the next generation of professionals. You know, so something that I'm very proud of is that we had both Steve Jobs when he was alive, uh, as well as uh, Carlos Slim uh, actually talked to, uh, to the students uh, on campus. So I'm glad that tradition continues. Um, my junior year, I decided to pursue a, a internship, a non-paid internship, because I realized that, you know, I, I wasn't gaining any, any experience in political science okay, or international relations or just government period, which was, which was something that I was very passionate about at the time, or still am. And so I decided to actually commute to Sacramento on a daily basis to work for an assemblywoman at the time, who then became a senator, who then became a U.S. congresswoman. Uh, and that's how I actually got my professional start. Uh, within six months, I was offered a full-time position. And so I was commuting from Chico uh, to Sacramento on a daily basis. Um, but it's what pretty much um, allowed me to to know that I was on the correct path, you know, in terms of my, my passion and what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Because literally, it is the rest of your life that you're going to be doing what you are going to eventually be doing. And so you want to be happy about those things. Um, so I worked at the state capitol, you know, graduated. Uh, the day that I graduated, I actually took my GRE and, you know, I got accepted to San Diego State. I did have the option of going to UCLA. Uh, UC Santa Cruz, uh, Stanford, and Harvard, but you know I'm a CSU guy. I believe in the public uh, school system, but that's just me, okay? and I'm very proud of that. Uh, so I just I chose San Diego State, uh, besides the weather, right? <laughs> um, 
and yes, I did party, so don't think I was a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I do have three bachelors, uh, meaning international relations, economics, uh, Latin American studies, and my minor is in Spanish. Um, so I decided to pursue my master's in public administration in San Diego. I, you know, I was lucky enough uh, to work for the county, and again, uh, for uh, well, Edgar, who was the chief administrative officer at the time. And he saw something in me that I didn't see myself, and he decided to take me under his wing uh, and more or less grew me. Uh, this is a man that managed a nearly billion dollar budget, uh, oversaw about 500 or more employees, and decided to mentor me. So I'm very thankful to him for that. Uh, you know, when I did graduate from uh, San Diego, I had a job lined up uh, down in San Diego County, but decided, decided to move, decided to move to the East Coast. Uh, because again, I'm very passionate about government. And without knowing anyone and going against the grain, meaning could have made a couple phone calls, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, you know, I work for, for a former speaker of the assembly. I work actually for the governor of California. I could have easily just picked up the phone, made a couple phone calls and made life much easier. But I chose not to, I chose not to. That's how I told him. Um, so we moved out to to DC, it took me about six months to actually land a job, and then this is where the white hat piece comes in. Okay, so so I interviewed with the USDA uh, for a legislative analyst position, and so as a legislative analyst, I had the luxury to represent the USDA uh, in you know at meetings at you know uh, um, Capitol Hill, the White House, you know, uh, discuss education policy, uh, ag policy, business policy, etc. And so, you know, I was very excited. I was very excited. I was so excited after six months that the first person that I called was my mother. And so I'm, I'm excited. I'm on the phone telling her that I got a job with the USDA. She nearly fades. She nearly fades. And she says to me, you are going to be a farmer. <laughs> I was like, really? You know, you know, the, you know the governor. You know, you're gonna farm. It's like, what do you know about farming? <laughs> it's like you've never worked in the fields. And it's like, I've never worked in the fields, but that's not what I'm gonna do. And so, you know, immediately she gives the phone to my brother. And so, you know, I asked my brother, well, well, what is she doing? It's like, oh, she's literally lighting up the camp, uh, the, the lights to all the candles for all the saints. It's like she's starting to pray. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. So, you know, with that being said, is if my mother does not understand what the USDA is after I have explained to her thousands of times what it is that I do, I could understand why you may not make that same connection. Okay. Um, so, why ag, you know, just a best, that's what I like to say. Uh, so after spending five years at DC, this position uh, became open. I actually decided to, stay, to take a step back in my professional career as I, you know, I've been pursued other, other endeavors while in DC. Um, but you know, my position itself uh, allows me to give back to my community. You know, I am from California. I am from, from Northern California. Uh, and that's how I do understand the challenges and issues that you go through on a daily basis. As I mentioned to you, I'm really no different. It's like, I mean, I do have a title. I can have an ego if I choose to, but I choose not to. You know, I want to remain home. I want to stay home and just give you the best. Give you the best. Uh, so I've been working working with the USDA for now ten years. Uh, in terms of my future, it's like I've gotten offers to run for Congress. You know, uh, whether I choose to or not, um, I do have that connection with with Apple. It's like a really quick funny story. It's like I, I actually met Steve Jobs at a bar at Chico in Chico. Um, don't don't worry, I wasn't like super drunk. I was actually super depressed because I actually bombed an interview. And so you know, it's like. I had practice all day, um, and I did terrible in the interview. Just the nerves got to me. You know, they got the better of me. And so I was talking to this white dude. You know, <laughs> so I couldn't make a connection. Maybe because I'm a little blessed, but I don't know. Uh, and so you know, I'm talking to him about my interview and how much I had it prepared, and I was highlighting, you know, all my all my attributes, whether it's my professional, academics, and so forth. And so you know, he's like, oh, by the way, I'm Steve Jobs. <laughs> it's like great. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. You know, it's like, and no, no. You know what? It's you did such a wonderful job. It's if you, if you are ever in need of a, a, a employment opportunity, come see me. 
So to this day, I actually keep in touch with his wife. To this day. To this day. So you in network, I call it social capital, which is something that I learned at Chico. So he's partying, partying, social capital, right? Know how to use that. Don't be shy, and you never know who you're talking to. So, you know, um, just know that, that folks are listening, folks are paying attention, and first impressions do count. Do count. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we decide to do in terms of the future. I have 